second dad. Immediately to my right is Charlotte Charles, who is Harry's mom. Immediately to my left is Tim Dunn, who is Harry's dad. And on the far left is Tracy Dunn, who is Harry's second mom. So let me just start off by making a few brief remarks. Uh, firstly, it's, uh, it's really good to be here in New York, in the, in the United States, and we're really glad to have the opportunity to, to share our story with, with the people of America because it's a terrible, terrible story of um, just desperate loss and compounded by um, oh, this poor family being uh, really abandoned by, by the authorities. There's clearly been some significant developments over the weekend, which I'm um, happy to take any questions on. Um, on Saturday, I think it was, although it's, time is blurring, um, both governments uh, seemed to get to a place where they agreed between them that uh, Anne Sackalis no longer had immunity, which was clearly a si significant development. And also on the same day, um, I was pleased to have an uh, approach from a, a lawyer uh, who had been appointed on behalf of um, Anne Sackalis. So in, that said, let's, we, have, we have until about 10.30 this morning. I'm happy to go straight to questions. And, uh, I've just opened a dialogue with, with, with a lawyer at the moment, uh, Lisa, and um, certainly we will try, she and I, to get together um, by the end of the week. But it's dependent on, on her agreeing and, and indicating that um, Mrs. Sukulis will return to the United Kingdom to present herself to the police. That's our, that's our condition, and if that isn't confirmed, then we don't really see the point in meeting. So if, that, if that's forthcoming, I'll meet with their lawyer on hopefully Friday or Saturday. But if not, I think we'll, we, we, yeah, it's, it's a condition for us. What's the agenda for this week? Have any US officials actually reached out to any of you? Do you have any meetings set up? Any we certainly plan to be in Washington um, Wednesday and Thursday at the very least. We have reached out to a number of lawmakers and politicians. And as many of you will have seen, I've also reached out to President Trump um, and uh, I'll make myself available to any politician who takes interest in this uh, terrible story. This, you, you see these people here now. These are just humble, n normal, ordinary people like you and I from a tiny little community in, in Northamptonshire in England, and they find themselves in the middle of a, really a, you know, quite, a, quite a hurricane. Um, but yeah, we will be there Wednesday and Thursday, and I'll, I'll, I'll meet with anybody who... Uh, President Trump, I suppose we need we need him to um, agree to put her on a plane back to the UK. Um, although, having said that, I believe that she should be able to make that decision herself. She needs to just do the right thing and just come back and face what she's done, face us as a broken family, face our UK system, and um, just do the right thing. She needs to set an example to her own children that you can't run away when you've done something so terribly wrong. We heard it in a statement. I have not heard her voice. I don't know how sincere it was. Of course, she's suffering. We've known all, this, all along that she would be suffering. Her children must be suffering. You know, two of them were in the car, and that's horrific. Um, our lad wasn't a little lad. The car was extremely damaged, as well as Harry. So we're not inhumane. We, don't, we still don't wish her any ill harm but we need to hear it from her, in her own words, in a room, on our terms, in the UK, with therapists and whoever else around us that we can help, you know, mediators. Um, but just hearing it through a statement, it's, we're seven weeks in now. It's a bit too much, too little, too late, I'm afraid. Charlotte. Suffered unnecessarily because of the actions of either the US authorities or the UK Foreign Office? What should they have done differently? 
not let her go home. You know, whoever made that decision, we do not know. Um, but we shouldn't have gone through this. We shouldn't be suffering like this. It should have been an open and shut case. The evidence is extremely clear what happened. Um, we've been told that there is CCTV evidence showing her leaving RAF Crowton on the wrong side of the road, and that CCTV follows her all the way down the road on the wrong side of the road, and you see Harry's headlight of his motorbike, and then there's a big fireball um, when his bike went up. So it should have been a clear-cut case. It should have been simple. And I promised Harry, and we promised Harry as a family when we'd lost him that night, when we were talking to him in the hospital, when we'd lost him already, that we would make sure justice was done. We thought it would be an easy one, an easy case, with all the evidence that the Northamptonshire police have. But clearly not, and that's why we're here. We just want to know that she's being brought back to the UK. You know, that would be a huge step in the, in, in the right direction. It's the only right thing to do. It's the only humane thing to do. Um, and we would hope then that we can try to start to move forward and the UK justice system do whatever they feel is right because with it being seven weeks later, we're not sure if we can be involved with trying to reduce her sentence, which is what we said we would do in the first place. Um, they wanted to pursue her or charge her with death by dangerous driving. We spoke to the police right at the beginning. Knowing that she had children, we were going to work with them, ask for her sentence to be reduced to death by careless, and ask for a suspended so that we could, didn't take her away from her children. Although she's robbed us of one of ours, it wasn't unintentional, it was an accident, we understand that. But seven weeks on, and we've had to do this to get an apology, just in writing, it's just wrong. Sorry. Could I ask, could I ask you some of the same questions? Have, have you thought what you might say to Anne Coolis if you were given the opportunity <coughs> to be in the room with her? Um, I've always wanted to ask her if she could explain the moment of the crash, find out uh, if she comforted Harry, if she spoke to Harry, uh, find out what her movements were. Did she try and call the emergency services? Or <laughs> I don't know, I'm, just, I'm just struggling because I can't imagine my lad being in the ditch and not having any comfort from anybody until the ambulance and the police turn up next minutes later. Do you feel you're struggling to begin to grieve because this has gone on so long? Um, when we had the funeral, um, which was a, a lovely tribute to him, I thought maybe that was the time we were going to turn the corner, but then it wasn't until a week later when we found out that uh, she'd left the country. And now it feels like it's just gone right back to that night he died and it's just no way I could start grieving yet. As a family we can't start yet. We need need this resolved. We do need this resolved. Yeah. And do you find it hard to believe that the fire didn't know that Anna Phillips had killed Michael? In my opinion <laughs> they knew she did have I'm sorry but there's so much not right here. This is just somewhere, somewhere somebody's made a decision to give this lady immunity and she's not entitled to the immunity as things have been said and we've known that from the start. We, we knew from the start. They've made a mistake. Someone's made a mistake. If you're able to meet with President Trump, what would you say to him? What does he need to understand? Just... Uh, to, to me, it's so, so simple. It's just, on that night, there was an accident. A lady made a mistake. She killed our son. She didn't mean to kill him. She didn't mean to have the accident. But 
you cannot walk away from that and just leave and expect nothing to happen. Our boy died. He deserves to have some justice, whatever that turns out to be. All you hear, if your son or child was to die, you would want justice for your child. And that's all we want. We don't want... We just want justice. We want the justice for Harry. I, I would just say to him, as a man, as a, as a, you know, father, thank you, just to see how it is, how could you let this happen? If you were a father and your child had died, surely you'd want that person to own up and take the responsibility of their actions. That's all it is. It's not, it's not that's all we want. It's really not, we, we have, we have a, a range of legal options open to us, um, which we are continually reviewing with, <coughs> with a, a QC who's been appointed and one of the, the top solicitors in London. So in, back home, we, you know, we, are, we are thinking about our strategies and wondering what to do. Um, we are, we are on, the, on the verge of appointing a, a lawyer um, who has expertise in international law and you know, just specifically these laws as well. Here on this side, I, one of the reasons why I'm here is to, is to try and um, talk to some lawyers who might be able to help us with legal proceedings here in the United States. So, you know, our, the people on the other side of this dispute need to understand that, that this family here are determined to get justice for Harry, whatever that means. And it, we're, you know, I've only been, I was only came on board about three weeks ago, and it's been a whirlwind ever since. I think we, the, the five of us here are going for a world record of the lack of sleep. I think I'm on my 16th day now of not, not being able to sleep because there's just so much to do. So I've got a team of lawyers who are sitting back in London at the moment, busy plotting this out and where, where, where's the best way to go. But, um, you know, we, we will get justice for Harry. Um, these little green ribbons that you see, that, which we are wearing now, symbolize Harry, and it's a very special thing that's happening. Harry loved Kawasaki green. That was his favorite color. And his motorbike, the one that he had his accident on, was painted in Kawasaki green. So we wear these ribbons today, and we will continue to wear them. Um, as a memory to this exceptional boy, um, wonderful, wonderful boy, smiling and happy, good to everybody, a fantastic motorbike rider. I'm not a motorbike rider, but I've spoken to people who know him. He said he, at age 19, he was an incredibly capable, safe rider. And, um, you know, apart from that, you know, we are trying to raise funds and we are selling these ribbons to, to, to people in the community uh, back home. I think demand was, you know, incredible. We didn't think, we, I think we printed a thousand, but then they were gone in minutes. So, um, you know, we, um, we are, I think the expression these days is lawyering up. And I am not going to rest until we secure uh, every last little bit of justice for this young man because he, would, he, he deserved nothing less. He was taken from us far too young in circumstances not of his making. And I have committed to my friends. These are my friends. They're my neighbors. And now I'm representing them. We were going to, we were going to pursue every single avenue on both sides of the Atlantic. Change that. That's absolutely right. So then the third phase of that, once we've done that, is, again, I cannot tell you how wonderful these people are who... who who are standing up here with me, the dignity and the magnanimity and the decency. I, I dare say, if it had been my child, I'm not sure that I could stand here as, with the composure that they are. But one of the things that has been, become clear to us is just how complicated these international uh, diplomatic immunity laws are. There's only three lawyers in the UK who really truly understand them. We have hired two of them. And they have both said that Unfortunately, you know, with, with Harry's passing, this is now an opportunity, given the conduct of the United States government, what they've done here, this is now an opportunity to get those laws out, get the dusty books out, and get some really serious brainy people and say, what happened to this family up here is not good enough. 
And in, in its simplest terms, what we have is, you know, clearly a, a, a terrible accident. But any of us in this room or anybody watching out there in the world, I would like to think you, would, you, would, you wouldn't run. You would stand and face the consequences and, and work with the authorities, whatever um, the courts decided. I, I, I can't imagine that a single person watching this um, can comprehend the actions that either the US government took or the Sakhalises when they got on that plane and flew back home. And what were they thinking? They knew they were leaving it, this a, a family. They didn't know who they were. But look, these are normal people up here with me. They're you and I. What would any of us do? And, you know, God bless these people up here. They, they are terrific people. They don't mean Ansecolis any, any ill will. It was, it was an accident. But the conduct afterwards has been nothing short of disgraceful. And we don't know who was involved in this decision or whether Mrs. Sackalis left the UK of her own free will. But we will not rest until we've either had a chance to speak to those who made that decision or had um, disclosure from them through the courts. Because you know these people deserve that explanation. And just imagine what we've been through over the last few weeks. And I spent, I've spent pretty much 24-7 with these people. And we sit there and we scratch our heads. The thing that we always come back to is, how could they? How could they even forget the law you know, from a human level or a moral level? Look, the pain that's been caused on top, of, on top of the obvious grief, which those of us who have suffered loss would know is bad enough. When you get that knock on the door and you say she's gone, and you, then you don't think you can get justice for your son, like Tim said, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it was just a, well, let's say, it was a kick in the stomach. Yeah, Arthur. It's still, you know, it's still some positivity for sure. Um, I think we'd like the same letter from the US government um, as opposed to just our, our own in the UK. Um, just as double confirmation that she does not have this immunity. Um, over and above that feeling that you get in the pit of your tummy every morning knowing that you've lost a child, there's been an extra gnawing at us in our tummies since we lost him um, that just keeps telling us something's not right um, and that's why I think call it parental instinct whatever I, I don't know I can't we can't explain I can't explain it but there's always been an extra feeling that something's not right um, I suppose the letter from Dominic Raab has confirmed um, in a sense um, that we have been right all along, that she doesn't have the immunity, but to hear it from the US government as well would be a, a, a bonus for us. Is it worrying that they haven't responded in a day and a half now to the letter? Yeah. Um, we're, we are literally living hour by hour anyway, um, have been for the last seven weeks. Each day's rolling into the next. Um, so to put a day and a half time frame on it just seems relatively short for us at the moment, but um, we would hope that we'll get something else and from them. Your head, Tim, what, how do you feel? Uh, well, I mean, we had a meeting with Dominic Raab last week, and uh, sorry, um, yeah, we had a meeting with <laughs> Dominic Raab last uh, last week, and it didn't go as I was hoping. It was he sort of said they asked for a waiver a couple of times and the US didn't grant it and then we get a letter saying that she didn't have immunity anyway so I don't understand why they were asking for a waiver then or the last week what they you know it to me it just doesn't add up why are you asking for something that she doesn't have so it just oh. yes it was great when I got the letter I was overjoyed but now I've had a chance to think about it it doesn't really change anything it hasn't really made any difference to me because we always said she didn't you know she didn't have immunity it was just that they confirmed it after they've asked for two or three waivers. I don't see how the government can be, or the Foreign and Commonwealth Office can get it so different. 
I don't know, is it, I don't know, is it me just looking at it too simple or is it just seems like why ask for a waiver if Mitchy doesn't have immunity? I don't know, sorry. <laughs> You go ahead and ask the first one. Um, the first one, the first thing we need to do about the change is get those diplomatic immunity laws looked at. Although we've now had it confirmed she doesn't have immunity because she's left the UK um, and she, she came back here so it doesn't cover her, those laws were written up in the 60s. There were hardly any cars on the road in the 60s. Um, so the, the accident losing Harry was very unlikely to have happened then. All these years on, those laws haven't been looked at, they haven't been reviewed, they haven't been changed. We want to push to get those dusty bits of paper back out of the back of beyond and get them reviewed and, and we will work really hard, um, especially with the money that people are so generously donating through the GoFundMe. Um, we, will, we will use it you know, to, to the best of our ability to try and make sure this doesn't happen to any other family ever again. Um, that's, that's going to be our, our next aim. We have to get change. We, we can't have diplomats and their spouses and or their dependents being able to be living, working in the UK, commit a crime, especially a serious one of this, and just be allowed to go home. It's not right. Um, as I keep saying, it's inhumane. Shouldn't be happening. And we will do all we can to make sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else. So just dealing with the, the second part of your question as to whether or not we think anybody who's involved in this decision-making process, whether they should be investigated, 100%. So that is going to be a focus uh, for us over the coming weeks and months. Um, some of you may have seen that I put out a public appeal on Saturday for anyone involved in that decision-making process, whether before uh, Mrs. Sekulis left, during her departure, or afterwards. Anybody who has any information in respect of, that, uh, in respect of her departure um, I have invited them to come forward, and I'll just reissue that appeal. Anyone who has any information relating to those matters, please come forward, because we'd like to hear from you. I can't say today whether there's a problem, but I smell a problem. And I, you know, just looking at what's happening, again, just think logically about this. An American driver has a, comes into collision with a British person who dies and then effectively leaves the country. I, I can't imagine, Americans, what, how you would feel if any of us came to your country and we did that. I think you would be really, really unhappy. We are no different to you. We have blood coursing in our veins just like you do. And imagine what these people have been through. And uh, all the experts who I've spoken to say that, that issue of closure is vital. You cannot move forward in the grieving process. And we've had taken detailed advice on this until they get that sense of closure. So what you see up here is some very brave and courageous people. I'm no expert, but I, you know, in my view, these people have shut down emotionally. And that's actually a very dangerous thing, because just at a time when they should be doing all their emotional release, they're just not able to. And the only way you can deal with the pain is to shut down. So there is no time to lose uh, United States government. These people are suffering. And uh, we won't take very long, and we will be, you know, coming to knock on your door because, not because we want to cause any trouble, we're, you know, we, we, you are our allies. But I said to these four people and their wider family that I will do everything I can and assemble the team of experts who will help me do that to get justice for Harry. And that just reminds me, just on this point, um, this is not going to be easy for us. This is going to be a lot of time and expense. 
And we have set up a GoFundMe page uh, called uh, Justice, and then the number four, Harry. Justice for Harry. And I'd encourage anybody to visit that, that GoFundMe page and donate, no matter how small or large, to this cause. Because it's not for the benefit of, of these four. It's the, for the benefit of you as well. Imagine if you're in Chicago or Atlanta and one of your loved ones gets mowed down by an international dipl diplomat and then leaves. Um, you will be in the, in the awful position that these people are in. So this is not just about us anymore. It's about everyone. And it's not about left or right, and we're not turning this into a political issue. It's about right or wrong. And we say, perhaps both governments have been wrong, but we are particularly focusing on, 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 the, uh, on the government here in, uh, here in, in Washington. Um, do you want? Does one of you want to take that and deal with the letter that you had from Mr. Johnson? Um, yeah, we we received a letter um, from uh, Mr. Johnson, but it was pretty um, nondescript. It just talked about. It, um, I just it just said. I don't even say. He just sent his condolences. Condolences. Yeah. Just sent his condolences. It was pretty standard. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. No. 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 Ah. Um, not enough. Oh, sorry, from here, in London. No, we've had no contact with the British Embassy here, but we, to be honest, we, we've been so busy, we haven't had a chance to reach out to them. But I, certainly when I go back to Washington, and we go back to Washington, I think that would be a, a nice thing to do, to, to touch base with the Embassy there, and perhaps they'll host us for maybe a, a spot of afternoon tea and, and, and scones, and um, see, see if we can um, make some progress and uh, build bridges. But, um, Okay, anybody else before we race off to our next uh, uh, why tell, New York? Tell, why come to New York? Why come to New York? Thank you. It's important to be here in New York because we, um, you know, we've done a terrific job in the UK of raising the profile of our, of our noble cause. Um, it, it, it's beyond, been beyond our wildest dreams. I don't think there are many people in, 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 back in the UK who don't know about this issue. Um, e even now, I'm being stopped on the street by people who are telling us to go for it. Um, we weren't aware how high a profile Harry's uh, case was here, and we wanted to come to New York to hook up with the breakfast shows and the talk shows, and, um, and so we had our first one this morning with um, Gail King at CBS, who was, I have to say, amazing with, with, uh, with this family here, and, and helped them tell their story. Um, and as I understand, that, that, that's out now. We have a number of similar um, um, TV and radio appearances today and tomorrow. Okay. Thanks very much for coming, everybody. Thank you. Photos of Harry? Uh, they're online. If you, if you, if you um, Justice for Harry, they're all on there. And we've got a page, and you can grab, feel free to grab whatever you need off there. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.